In section 6.5, we're going to take a look at solving absolute value equations. Uh, and, and you'll kind of see how this relates to what we've been talking about because we're going to set up two different types of equations. We're using the word or, similar to what we did with the compound inequalities. So uh, one thing to note here, what it means to be the absolute value is very simply, it's the distance between x and 0 on a number line. Okay. Remember, a distance can't ever be negative. So absolute values will always be positive. And so there are two possible solutions to this absolute value equation. Either x equals a or x equals the opposite of a. Okay, Both of those would be correct solutions. This will make more sense as we kind of go forward here. So in example number one, as soon as I get the absolute value thing here by itself, what that means is I set up two different cases separated by or. In other words, you say the thing inside the absolute value is either the number or it's the opposite of the number. Okay, and so there are your two solutions. Think about it, okay? The absolute value of positive 12 is just 12, and the absolute value of negative 12 is positive 12 as well, right? Again, we said absolute values can, cannot ever be negative. So in part B, it's the same idea, except now there's a little bit of work to, to be done, okay? So you have B plus 8 equals 5, or b plus 8 equals negative 5. And then all you do is solve these two equations separately. So subtract 8. So either b equals negative 3, or subtract 8, b equals negative 13. And you can check your answers, just plug them back in. If I plug in negative 3 here, negative 3 plus 8 is positive 5. The absolute value of positive 5 is 5. Okay, if I plug in negative 13, negative 13 plus 8 is negative 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. Both solutions check out. Part C, no different. Set up your two different equations. C minus 9 equals 2, or... C minus 9 equals negative 2. Solve them separately. We're just going to add 9 to both sides. So either C equals 11, or when I add 9 over here, I get C equals positive 7. Okay, and so when I plug it in, 11 minus 9 is 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2. 7 minus 9 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. Okay. Part D is going to be done in a very similar manner, so I'm going to go ahead and let you do Part D here on your own. All right, the second type of example, there's a lot more legwork involved, okay? And so um, the hint here is a good one, and what it says is isolate the absolute value and then set up your two cases. So before I do anything else, I have got to get it to where the left-hand side, all that's left there is this absolute value guy. So I got to get rid of the 4 and I got to get rid of the 6. And so you just solve it. Treat your um, absolute value like it's parentheses if you want. However, I say that, but don't, don't worry about distributing uh, that 4. Okay, so in other words, we'll subtract 6. So I have 4 times the absolute value of 2x plus 8 equals 24. I got to get rid of the 4, so I'm going to divide both sides by it. So those cancel. So the absolute value of 2x plus 8 equals 6. And now from there, that's when I set up my two cases. So either 2x plus 8 equals 6, or 2x plus 8 equals negative 6. And then I just go ahead and use my algebra skills that we've talked about this year. So 2x equals negative 2. Divide both sides by 2. So either x equals negative 1, or 2x equals negative 14. Divide by 2. Um, so, or x equals negative 7. And again, um, the nice thing about this is at the very end, you can take those two values, plug them back into the original, and verify that it works out. So when I plug in negative 1, okay, I get 2 times negative 1, so that's negative 2, plus 8 is 6. Absolute value of that is 6. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 6 is 30. Check. Plug in negative 7. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. So this guy is negative 14 now. Plus 8 is negative 6. The absolute value of negative 6 is positive 6. 6 times 4 is 24 plus 6 is 30. Check. Both solutions check out. We're good to go. Okay. 
Uh, part B, no different. Okay, I'm, I'm going to use the same process I just did. Subtract my 6. So 3 times the absolute value of 5x minus 10 equals 15. Divide both sides by 3. Those cancel. So the absolute value of 5x minus 10 equals 5. And then you set up your two guys. 5x minus 10 equals 5. Or 5x minus 10 equals negative 5. And now we just start going to work. All right. We're going to add 10. So 5x equals 15, divide by 5, x equals 3, or, same thing over here, add 10, add 10, 5x equals 5, divide both sides by 5, or x equals positive 1. Okay, and again, I, I would suggest just plug them back in mentally to verify that you're on the right track. <clears throat> Okay. Um, example three is a is a good one because when you start doing this, you know, subtract eight, subtract eight, and so then you get the absolute value of seven x minus three equals negative three. And once you get that, once you see that absolute value equals negative, immediately you know there is no solution because we've already said earlier in this video that the absolute value of any number will always be positive. And so there's absolutely no way to take an absolute value and make it negative. There's no solution here. Okay, so you'd say not possible, no solution, whatever would work out. Okay, absolute deviation uh, equals the absolute value of x minus the given value. Okay, and, and I'll explain this more as we start looking at some examples here. Okay, so, uh, so number four says the absolute deviation of x from 10 is 1.8. Find the values of x that satisfy this requirement. Okay, so understand something. Deviation means um, how far you move away from a given number. Okay, so right now the number we're moving away from is 10, and we're moving away from it by 1.8 units. Okay, so when I write this equation, remember the absolute deviation is the absolute value of x minus 10. Okay, and now there we are, we're right back to an absolute value equation, and we all know how to solve this, because it's what we've been doing in the first uh, two examples, okay? You set up your two separate guys, so you have um, the, uh, I'm sorry, you have x minus 10 equals positive 1.8, or x minus 10 equals negative 1.8, add your 10, add your 10, so x equals uh, 8.2, or add your 10, add your 10, x equals 11.8. So those are your two solutions. So in other words, we're moving up and down from 10 by a factor of, not a factor, but by um, 1.8 units. So if I go up 1.8, I'm at 11.8. And if I go down 1.8, I end up down at 8.2. So that's what we mean when we say deviation. You're moving away from a value um, by, a, by a given number of units. Okay. Um, find the values of x that satisfy the definition of absolute value for a given value of negative 13.6 and an absolute deviation of uh, 2.8. Okay, Find the values of x that satisfy the definition of absolute value for a given value of negative 13.6 and an absolute deviation of 2.8. Okay, So your absolute deviation is 2.8. You're trying to solve for x. You've got to subtract off the given value. And so this turns into a plus plus. Okay, and so now you end up with your two equations. All right, so you have x plus 13.6 equals 2.8 or x plus 13.6 equals negative 2.8. Subtract your 13.6 from both sides. So x equals negative 15.8. I'm sorry, I screwed that up, 16.4. So negative 16.4, or um, subtract your 13.6. X equals negative, uh, let's see here, negative, uh, let's see, is it 10.8? Okay. And again, you can plug those back in and verify that they work. Um, and my assumption is that you will find that they will work. So 
Uh, again, I'm assuming that this absolute, this idea of absolute deviation is going to probably give you the hardest time out of all of the ideas. Um, we'll revisit that again in class and make sure that we clear up any confusion or misconceptions that you might have.